Hello, listeners of Jackie Just Chatters. This is your hostess, Jackie Lentz. This is my ongoing bonus mini-cast murder mystery serial. Each week brings a fresh letter in this cozy tale of murder. If you have not listened before, you are going to want to find letter number one and begin there. I hope you enjoy. To Silence a Scandalmonger, Murder in an English Village. Welcome to another installment of this audio drama. Play along as you step into the role of one Gwendolyn Armstrong, who is living in 1951 Oxford, England, and is in the final months of earning her bachelor's degree in history from St. Hugh's. Your post is full of regular letters from your Aunt Ivy and other occupants of the charming village of Upper Stock Green. On the surface, it seems a serene picture of stone cottages, beautiful green countrysides, and charitable neighbors. But underneath, in the darkness, A sinful world hides, and the shadow beats the heart of a murderer. By the time the last letter arrives, can you identify the killer? Previously, on to Silence a Scandalmonger. We learned that a part of the churchyard, in the corner of the cemetery, hidden by hedgerows, is known as the Lover's Corner. A long-used place for sweethearts to meet. And Ivy, on a trip to lay flowers on her loved one's graves, happened across just such a pair using the hideaway. It was none other than Reverend Fernsby and Miss Berrycloth. Ivy has begun to feel that this sort of behavior in a minister is intolerable, and is thinking about writing the bishop to expose the affair. But she is willing to give Mrs. Fernsby a chance to get her husband under control before making a move. Ivy's generosity knows no bounds. Let's join this week's adventure, shall we? A letter to Gwen from Ann Ivy. 22nd of April, 1951. Rabbit Hill Cottage, Upper Stock Green, England. Dear Gwenny, hello, darling girl. Thank you again for coming home. It was wonderful to see you, even for just one night. I was delighted to share Easter services and supper with you. If I had more notice, I could have prepared a finer meal. Now that Mr. Gibson is supplying us again, I could have made sure to give you a proper breakfast instead of porridge. I wish you could have stayed longer, but I know you are anxious about this last Trinity term and sitting your final exams at St. Hugh's. I am wishing you every success. I want to assure you once more that I didn't mind at all you going for an evening walk with Constable Freddie Allen. I understand your need to divide your time at home between different people. You never did share. While on your stroll, did you end up at the lover's corner in the cemetery? Does Freddie know that Lucas Davis carried your valise? and acted as your escort as you walked to catch the morning train back to Oxford? I swear, I have not said a thing to him. But given the daggers he has been shooting Mr. Davis around the village, I am sure he knows. I told you, in a village, nothing is secret. I would like to reassure you that I approve if you end up with either gentleman. They are both upstanding men who know their pleas and thank yous. Neither have ever given me a reason to suggest they should be avoided. I suppose if I had to pick one myself, I would select Freddy. He has kind eyes and is a man who doesn't seem to be in love with the sound of his own voice. But either would be an acceptable match. You could do far worse. Neither one seems to have any objection to you being so educated either, which isn't that a wonder of the modern age. Have you gotten any further on our mystery of Brooke Turner, also known as Mrs. Rebecca Harrison? 
I am certain she suspects I know something. On my last visit to the library, I asked her about the novel Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm by Kate Douglas Wiggin. It was the only other Rebecca novel I could think of to tease her with. The joke was on me though, because she did have it on the shelves. I ended up having to check it out or I would look ridiculous. I surprised myself by actually reading this children's book, which I must admit was rather charming, if a bit overly cheerful for a woman of my years. Miss Turner will be at the meeting for the altar flowers today, as will Mrs Gastrell. When I last saw her, while we were both at the post, she asked if I had used the strawberry jam yet. I confessed that I had not that I was saving it for a special occasion. I should have brought it out when you were home for Easter. But it was such a fly-by-night visit that I forgot all about the jam. In fact, I had forgotten all about it again until writing this letter. Perhaps I will no longer wait for a significant event and just make a batch of scones and eat it up. It has been so warm of late. It is perfect scone and jam weather. Mrs. Bailey and Mrs. Palmer will be in attendance at the meeting, both trying to not look at each other as usual. They are absurd. In a village this small, you cannot get away from anyone. I have half a mind to ask Iris to come with me, just to put a cat amongst the pigeons. Mrs. Fernsby, the Reverend's wife, is leading the group. I will be looking for a moment to have that private word with her. Woman to woman, you understand. I saw the foxglove in the cemetery getting ready to bloom, just as Mrs. Fernsby predicted. It looks like we have plenty of fresh, lovely flowers for the arrangements. Remember, your room is open and ready for you when you are finished at St. Hugh's. How wonderful it will be to finally have you home for good. You will fill the house with some needed youthful spirit. We can play those Mr. Miller records of yours and scandalise Mrs. Owens. I appreciate your reassurance that swing music is not a socialist affectation. I look forward to your next letter. Make sure to get out and enjoy the fresh air. Love, Aunt Ivy. Come back in a week for Gwen's next letter as we work closer to solving who silences a scandalmonger. Have any suspects, speculations, or insights? Head over to my Facebook author page and share your theories. You can find the link in the description. This podcast was written by Jackie Lentz, narrated by Jackie Lentz, and Ivy, voiced by Katie Sutcliffe. Remember, you can follow on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast, and iHeartRadio. Or you can find me, like, and subscribe on YouTube. If you are enjoying these podcasts, I would be delighted if you shared with your friends, left a rating on Spotify, or a review on Apple Podcast. Until next time, I wish you well.